Good day viewers, I'm Francis Adeshola. Glad to have you join us in today's broadcast, Church Without Borders. In this edition, God is set to bless and give you divine turnaround in your life and vocation. Please stay tuned. I greet my viewers. You are welcome to another edition of your program, Church Without Borders. Church Without Borders. And of course, today, the first part, which has to do with the church, God's expectation for his church, the essence of the church of God on the surface of the earth, church that is devoid of denomination, church that is devoid of personal ideology, church that is focused only on Christ and the scriptures. And after that, we'll be talking about the word of God, the message for the day. Then, of course, we will close with prayers as usual. Uh, but before we go on, I want us to just have a few words of prayers. Father, we thank you for making it possible to come the way of your people. Thank you, Father, for all our listeners and our viewers. I pray, Lord, that as we fellowship together in this program, Church Without Borders, church without walls church without limitations father i pray in the name of jesus wherever they are hearing me or that they are part of the broadcast that lord you will bless them god that they will have a testimony after this broadcast thank you father in jesus name we have prayed amen right talking about the church of jesus and god's expectation Today I want to talk about doing good. Doing good. It is expectation of Jesus that his church on the earth is to do good. To show kindness. To show love. To share with fellow believers. Even with the world at large. But like as we are talking about fellow Christians, now you see, when you see people that belong to a club in the world, the interests of the members of that club come first. And of course, they will be there at all times to assist the fellow member of the club. You will belong to an old student association. Now you see, your old student is free to come to you as people that you have been together whether when you are in high school or when you are in the college or in the or in the university or any in in higher institution now such a person something has brought you together you call the person a member of uh, your uh, alumni you are, you are you are you are together together you pass through that uh, uh, school that that college now you re, that person become a close ally and of course it will come to you and ask for help. Even in some, in some associations like that, when any member of that association is in trouble, they will communicate around to say, oh, so so and so is having this challenge, let's contribute money, let's see how we are going to help him. Now, if people can do that in just ordinary club or a school association or people working in the same place, how much more people that are Christians? People that are Christians. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 The Bible says As we have therefore opportunity Let us do good unto all men Especially Take note of that word Especially unto them Who are of the household of faith Can you see now Another word for church Is members of the household of faith member of the household of faith now you can see it's a household of faith it's not talking about a denomination it's not talking about you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 you know the, the name of a particular uh, christian association household of faith we are members of the household of faith i want you to see a fellow christian does not matter the denomination he attends or the color of the race 
see that person as your brother see that person as your sister and that you are members of the household of faith just like people are members of a club or they are members of an whole student's association now we are members of the household of faith and we must endeavor to do good to help to do good to all men especially as we are doing good to uh, the fellow christians we are to also extend that good to people at large whether they are born again or they are not born again but the emphasis today is that let us see ourselves see that brother as somebody that needs to be helped if you are eating in your house you ask yourself whether your fellow brother is hungry and what do you do to rescue the situation in first john chapter 3 verse 17 first john chapter 3 verse 17 he said but whosoever at this world's good and see it his brother have need and shutted up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of god in him can you see now he said if you who has the world goods you are blessed it's not because you are smart you are blessed it's not because you know how to do it you get a good job you have a good employment you are you are you are you are rated you know as uh, uh, in, in 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 the first class in an organization where you where you belong to it's not because you are smart don't forget that you attended the same college with that person but you are privileged to uh be receiving uh a, 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 a good wages a good wages you study the same thing with another person who is just working in government parastatal or who is working you know in the local government but you have the opportunity to work with the multinationals you must remember that you are not not because you are smart but god has positioned you especially if you say you are a child of god you're a christian god has positioned you there to do good to all men doing good is a responsibility of those who are christian members of the church of jesus christ members of the household of faith he said now if you if you have these things that god has blessed you with you remember that in the early church the bible said they all have all things in common they have all things nobody will go hungry nobody will sleep hungry everybody have they will share to the extent like the man that is called barnabas by interpretation is called the son of consolation the bible says he went he had the land he sold it because of the welfare of the body welfare of the church because of fellow believers that is an example you know he did not close his bowels of compassion the bible said that if such a person shut up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of god in him and that's why you see we must not do we must not love just with mouth we must love indeed indeed so the focus of this first segment addressing the church the believer the body of christ is that we must do good to all men especially members of the house of faith of faith whether in your local church or local assembly or outside there somebody who is a christian whatever is in your power you know to assist such a person to share with that person yes you may need to talk to that person how he can have multiple streams of income how you can encourage that person to do something that can make him or make her to be better off you know financially but watch you is hungry first is destitute you know of the daily needs the bible says that if somebody is dead of daily needs and just say go the lord be with you and you don't share what you have say how can you say the love of god dwells in your heart do that first and you see there is an example i would love to refer to in the book of acts chapter 9 verse 36 to 39 is the man, woman a lady called docas docas that the apostles called tabita the bible said now there was at joppa a certain disciple named tabita which by interpretation is called docas this woman was full of good works and arm deeds which she did and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died whom when they had washed they laid her in an upper chamber and for as much as leader was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had had they have heard that peter was there they sent unto him two men desiring him that he will not delay to come to them 
and what happened then peter arose and went with them when he was come they brought him to the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dopkas made why she was with them can you see compassion doing good this lady died but the good works the investment into the church into fellow christian the investment the investment was speaking for her to the extent that the bible said they show quote they show everything that this lady has given to them look at the net the, the, the last verse that verse uh, 40 there the bible says because the compassion that this woman has shown and people came around they were crying but peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning to the body said tabita arise and she opened her eyes and when she saw peter she sat up let me ask you if you die today you say you're a christian what is that thing that will motivate people to pray for you to come alive what is that thing you have done in the life of believer that made people to grow and say this brother that is sick lord you must heal him this sister that is sick lord you must heal her when you are when, i mean and do it that there's no this person cannot go now because the good deeds in the church of jesus christ in the life of christian everywhere is being spoken of but if there is nothing to show for they will just say that when she was when he was alive what did he do so the church of jesus must be a light on the surface of the earth doing good is the focus of this first segment after this musical time out i will be with you shortly you're welcome after that musical interlude now we are talking about One, sing it with me. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. Sing it, Jamie. We are washed. We are sanctified. Cleansed by the blood, we are born of the Spirit. We are children of the Lord. Everybody, we are heirs of the Father. We are joined heirs with the Son. We are children of the Kingdom. We are family, we are one. Tell it to us, Billy. We are members of his body. We are objects of his love. We partake of his holiness. We are citizens of heaven above. Sister Annie. We are partakers of his suffering, we're partakers of his grace, we shall be changed to be like him, when we see him face to face. Sing it, people. He died for four days, and was brought forth to life. In John chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come forth, which means to bring forth that thing that you want to bring forth must have been in a position or a state of decay or a state of death or in 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 in, in, in active something that is not active you want to make it to begin to function or become functional now we are saying that there is a need for power of god to be released for that thing to come forth and this power of god has to uh, come to life you have to make sure that this power of god you contact have a contact with the power 
so that the power will be able to speak forth or to be made manifest you remember also ezekiel the vision in ezekiel 37 he was taken to the valley of dry bones and dry bones and god asked a son of man can these bones live and of course ezekiel said lord thou knowest and god told him to prophesy and as the end the the bones that are dead the bible says bones came to join with bones and flesh covered them sinew no and they have sinew and of course the spirit of god came upon them and of course the interpretation god said this is the israelites that they have said that their hope is lost but god said but i will open your grave and i will bring you forth so they did it takes a power of god to bring forth to life to bring forth to life but i'm saying that somebody must be ready to pay the price of for power before the power of god is released into the life of such an individual shout hallelujah and of course luke chapter 1 verse 57 give us the example of elizabeth elizabeth said now elizabeth was whose full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son can you imagine that it, it takes a woman to labor to labor that is release of power before such a woman can bring forth a new life can bring forth a new life and of course people of god now we have looked at two uh, examples of course i wanted to mention two but we were able to end with one which is power of prayers we need the power of prayers to bring forth much has been said but if i want to add one or two things there that will take us to the second chronicles chapter 26 verse 15 second chronicles 26 verse 15 you can actually read from verse 1 to 15 but when you look at that verse 15 the bible says and uh, this is uh, a young a young king uzziah became king in judah at the age of 16 and he sought god the bible says he sought god in the days of zechariah who had understanding in visions of god and as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper and what is the result in verse 15 when you when he sought the lord something began to to, to happen in his kingdom something what things began to come forth things that has never happened before began began to come to manifestation and that's what the bible says. and he made in jerusalem engines invented by corny men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks what we call machine gun today or wizards you know in the in those days it was this king that was the first person you know to bring forth such a thing to shoot arrows and get stones you know with her and his name spread far abroad for he was marvelously helped till he was strong he was marvelously helped and why because he engaged in the power of seeking god he sought god in prayers he sought god by doing his will and of course the result was made manifest that things that has never happened through this young king came to manifestation the second point is power of faith you need faith to bring forth faith is very very important in acts chapter 6 verse 8 the bible tells us and stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people you know he had in the man had faith and power where you see faith there will be power where there is a power in demonstration then faith is there so to be able to bring forth you must engage in faith you must put your faith to war your faith must be active not passive your faith must be able to bring forth results you need to release the power of faith in matthew chapter 8 verse 8 that's the story of the centurion whose servants were sick and um, went to jesus and jesus said don't worry i'm going to follow you but the man said the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed that is faith at work that is the power of faith even the centurion understood the power of the spoken word 
the power of releasing the word of faith no wonder jesus christ said he was jesus marveled and said i have not seen such a great faith in israel that this centurion demonstrated so when you see a person who wants to bring forth you must release the power of faith into the situation or the circumstance that is coming your way so it's very very important in philippians chapter 2 verse 16 says we should hold them for the word of life holding for the word of life so as a christian for you to bring forth your testimony for you to bring forth your dream the word of life must be in your mouth and of course is the word of faith and by the time you release that word of faith you are going to create a new world around yourself you are going to bring forth miracles you are going to bring forth signs and wonders in the book of second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 he said we we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believe and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak can you see now the spirit of faith the power of faith when you speak then it will come to manifestation you are to create a new world around yourself now you don't you are not carried away by what is are going on around you there is no doubt that with all that is going on in the world some people will lose out some people will win some people will not will be out of job as it is happening that millions are already getting out of job around the world economies of the world of so many nations you know are collapsing but for you as a child of god your story is different all what you need to do is to speak the word of faith the power of faith will be released and you can bring forth your own miracles hallelujah hallelujah and of course lastly i want to uh, you have to you have to bring up the power to prevail in circumstances of life power to prevail power to prevail in life you must release power to prevail in all life circumstances now you see there is a story i have I, you know shared severally it's the revelation of what happened to the man esau you know how esau you know lost out how esau lost out uh you know that jacob was what i mean he, he sold his birthright he sold his birthright in that genesis 27 verse 30 genesis 27 verse 30 now this father isaac wanted to give him what we can call the covenant blessing as the first son though they were twins but it was the twins but the first person to come forth and the father said go outside there go and get the game that is go for, uh, out on your aunt and for your uh, to aunt and get me you know a kind of uh, a meat that you get from the game so that i can eat i will be able to bless you but you know all the stories that Rebecca, who prefer Jacob, you know, the, to Esau, had the conversation and told his brother, he said, go and bring one of the, uh, uh, from, 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 from uh, one lamb, one animal from uh, the animals that you are keeping, you know, and he brought it and he dressed it and presented it. You know all the stories, those are the, uh, the, 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 the cheats and the, uh, that Jacob demonstrated demonstrated and the father said who is this he said it is jacob i mean it is uh, esau your first son and the whole story there but where i'm really going is that after he received the blessing and he ran away and esau brought you know what he has gone to prepare and said who is that is isaac said who is that person that came in he has brought meat and i've eaten the, and what is called what is called venison in those days i have eaten and i've blessed and he shall be blessed and uh, the Bible says Esau wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. Look at that verse 30. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. Too late. And so when he was crying, said, My father, ah, is there no other blessing that is left for me? And the father spoke in that verse 40. If you look at that verse 40 the father said and isaac his father answered and said thou shalt live by the sword isaac his father said thou shalt live unto him behold thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth 
and the dew of heaven from above verse 40 and by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that is power dominion that is the power that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck wonderful this Isaac did not have anything to say he said all the blessings are given to uh, uh, that to, to Jacob your brother but I believe because this man you know was in sorrow he cried he said my father even with this one blessing and I could see the mercy of God interjecting at that particular time and, uh, and they, and they, they believed that an anointing and inspiration came and Isaac began to speak prophetically he said look you are going to serve your brother but a time is coming when you become strong you will break the yoke from your neck you break the yoke of it. I don't know the yoke of the enemy that is your neck or the yoke of somebody that is tying you down and you are not able to break forth into your destiny. But I tell you, when you have the power to break forth, every yoke shall be broken, every snare shall be cut asunder. And I believe 20 to 21 years after, if you read the story further in that uh, chapter 33, verse 1 to 10 chapter 3 verse 1 to 10 the bible tells us that when jacob was coming back with the wives with the children with the animals with the property and things like that he now sent to J uh, to esau he said he sent uh, an advanced party go and tell esau my brother that his brother jacob is coming <laughs> and esau said jacob is coming after 21 years jacob is coming tell jacob i will meet him in the wilderness we will settle the case in the in the world he's not going to get home tell him i'm coming with 400 soldiers i'm coming with 400 arms men and by the time jacob had this he was afraid now the man that is a commander of 400 men bodyguards not to talk of other soldiers not to talk of the families all right families now he's no longer a mean man he was no longer just an ordinary person hallelujah he wasn't an ordinary person the power to break forth he has broken the yoke of jacob from his neck the man that would have been a non-entity nobody now became somebody he was a commander-in-chief of army he has soldiers he has bodyguards he has people to feed he has now and by the time jacob eventually met him and uh, and he said what are all these things that i could see the animals the this and that he said well it is to appease you you know it's to is this, this thing is brought so that i'll be able to appeal to you so that you'll be able to receive it you know uh, you know from me to receive my presence look at it verse 11 said take i pray thee my blessing that is brought to thee because god has dealt graciously with me and because i have enough and he urged him and uh, you know and i took it because he told him he said all this thing that you are bringing i have enough that is verse 9 and he so said i have enough my brother keep that thou hast unto thyself and he has to beg him even if you read the story for that go and read that story very interesting from verse 1 to 10 the bible says as jacob was approaching esau he bowed down seven times he bowed down seven times and the traditional way of bowing down in israel it is not just to nod your head no you have to go on your knees your knees with your hands and with your head touching the ground he did that as he was approaching esau seven times the man that would have handed up a non-entity he received the power he got a challenge you know as prophetical word from his father that it shall come to pass you will have dominion when you are strong that's what he said when you are strong you when you have dominion when you have the power you will break the yoke of your brother off from your neck your brother the yoke has always been there the other time you know he said give me portage he said unless you sell your birthright foolishly he sold his birthright now at this time around he went ahead to get the blessing before this man appeared now that was how esau was liberated i pray for you that the lord god almighty will cause you to also have the power the anointing to break forth 
After this time out, we'll pray together. back the last segment is to pray with you for if another prophetic prayer to come your way and i want to concentrate from the story of jacob and esau we just read in that verse 40 the bible says and by thy sword that is genesis 27 verse 40 shall thou live now you can see prophetically there was a dimension in what you can call the occupation of Esau that day. Esau has always been a hunter all his life. You kill one animal, you bring it home. One animal. How many animals does he want, do you want to kill before you become rich? And his father told him and said, look, there is a dimension prophetically that look, you are going to live by the sword. It is by your sword. And that is what changed the career, changed the job occupation. And this one became a mercenary. He became a warrior. So you will live by the sword. You will live by this. And that also means that you cannot achieve without being a fighter. He said, and uh, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. When thou shall have the dominion. And under that translation, say, when you become strong, you will break his yoke from your, from your neck. I pray for you. As God deliver Esau from being a non-entity to somebody. As he came from zero to surplus. A man that has 400 bodyguards, not to talk about other soldiers and the families of them, that, I mean, their family that he was, he was feeding. I pray that the same power to bring forth will enter into your destiny. The same power will liberate you. Every yoke that the enemy has put upon your life or any yoke of anybody from your foundation or family background or your place of work that says you are not going to move forward, I command the yoke to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. By the reason of the word that has come today, receive power to break forth. Power to break forth. Power to give birth. Power to have testimony for your dreams to come to manifestation in the name of Jesus. You will not die like non-entity. You will not die in poverty. You will not die in struggle. From today, let your destiny arise. Come forth in the name of Jesus and go forth there and begin to shine and make impact in your world in Jesus' name. See you next time. God bless you. I believe you are blessed in today's broadcast church without borders join us in subsequent edition go out there and make impact in your world god bless you